Hello and welcome. You probably found your way here from Palantype.com, the website where you can learn a Palantype style stenographic system for the German language. So we will try to type in German as fast as a typical German person speaks. We talk about hardware requirements now because in principle a Palantype style system means you can use any kind of keyboard to get started. Any kind? Well, um, to check out whether or not a normal keyboard works, I have an ergonomic Microsoft keyboard here. I used it a lot before I got to know more specific designs and uh, now I don't use it anymore at all. Uh, it, it's got some perks, there's this uh, wrist support, uh, or armrest it's called. Um, it has a split layout which is nice because a natural position for your hands is a little bit further apart than for usual keyboard. It already got a problem, there are no mechanical switches, but this key, this B gets stuck and there's no obvious reason why that would be so. And just look at the conventional keyboard layout. The amount of traveling your pinky on your right hand is supposed to do is ridiculous, if you think about it. Uh, you have enter, shift, right control, backspace. Um, this is a Spanish layout. You have a couple of special characters here for programming. You would have a couple of English special characters here for German. You have German E and Ö there. It's actually not well thought through. And even more interesting, uh, I only learned when I uh, bought new keyboards, why aren't they what, it's, what is called orthogonal, ortho, why aren't they ortholinear, the keys, right? Why are they uh, shifted a little bit? Well, this is how they made typewriters uh, about 150 years ago, and still this is fairly standard. Having all those weird traditional disadvantages, of course, a standard keyboard also has uh, its pros. Everyone knows what to do when they see it. Won't be the case for the other two keyboards I show you. Um, um, no one needs to be scared, but we want to try and type Palantype. So the first thing is the Palantype virtual keyboard makes use of your thumb with four additional keys for each of your thumbs. How do you do this on this keyboard? Because the thumb is only uh, meant to use space. So we have to shift the home row upwards and now we have the uh, keys G, B, V and C and H, N, M uh, semicolon here to use for the thumb. And actually, yes, you can uh, type uh, stenographically on this keyboard like this. I wouldn't recommend it. It's more for trying out than anything because you see already my hands are high up in the air. You won't get to top speed with it. And um, an actual problem we have this, with this keyboard is it does not support the N key rollover feature. So there are sometimes only two keys registered once, even though I press four of them. Uh, there are gaming keyboards that have a similar layout that do have the N-key rollover feature. So uh, we can just pretend this would have the N-key rollover feature. Still, uh, the disadvantages of uh, missing thumb keys. This is basically uh, good enough for trying out. Switching to an Ergodox keyboard now. You see already it comes in two parts. It looks from outer space for people who are not used to this. Um, and I only ever bought it for stenographic typing, Highland type style, right? Because it's not a steno machine, it's still a well, regular QWERTY keyboard. It does have NK rollover, of course, but the most important thing, it's got a lot of keys for your thumbs. Um, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but indeed a common complaint with this keyboard is, well, first of all, I always uh, put it wrong, so it belongs like this, thumb in the middle. Um, I use this one, this one, this one, and this key for my thumb. And this key is kind of out of reach depending on the size of your hands. I have comparably large hands. I know people who can't reach at the same time the thumb here and the pinky over there. Um, you might think this is not a big problem, but really the idea is, and it's in, in principle it, it works, to have your hands resting, never moving, only your fingers traveling, and when your hands are tiny, this keyboard just is too big. For me it's fine, it's at the moment uh, the keyboard of my choice. Those four thumb keys are very intuitive. There's, I don't know if it's an advantage or a disadvantage, There's additional, this additional gap actually helps me to orient. Apart from that, uh, for stenographic type, typing, my hands never move, only my fingers travel. I can reach a couple of combinations just fine. Uh, there are some notorious combinations, uh, what do you see here? Um, uh, but nothing nothing impossible. So this is actually great and I'm confident that I will get up to speed with this keyboard 
no problem. I paid over $300 for this, so it's not, um, not exactly cheap. For the last keyboards in my list, I have uh, this little gem. It's called Atreus from Keyboard.io. I have to actually connect it to, for it to do its job. Atreus it's called. It's really tiny, it's really lovely. I liked it. I only practiced a little bit, but all what I learned practicing my palantype.com style steno system actually transfers over to this one fairly easy. I'm using the same uh, wrist support for this one to actually get this position from top which makes it much easier to reach all the keys. Uh, and you see here to, to get four thumb keys, which arguably isn't exactly ideal for this keyboard, I bend around the thumb row, right? Uh, you can do it in different ways. You can also use a square here, or you can use the four keys above, bending your thumb very much inwards to reach here. Uh, it's a matter of taste. For me, the, this L shape works fine. There is a little bit of, um, well, extra practice to get this movement right because you see already I have to move my hand up to reach this key here. Apart from that, the keys are extremely soft. I put the, uh, my exact order in the description. Um, uh, typing on this one is great. Just uh, so that you know, those two keyboards are actually my recommendation to get started with Palantype style typing and your regular gaming keyboard or whatever you have at home just for starting out, just for seeing if it's something that, that, that you're generally interested in. There's the additional advantage with this one that it's also great for creative style, serial typing, um, programming, whatever. I'm hoping to replace all my uh, typing habits with stereotyping, but you never know. Uh, this keyboard is a little bit, well, because it's so small, which is, I guess, an advantage, it's also a design feature, a little bit more complicated to set up for regular typing. Um, Two of those keyboards, great choice, um, get typing. 